A couple other points here before we close in this sequence. And that's how to treat opponents and fans. And, uh, and again, these, the, the opponents' fans are not our enemies. Now we realize the world wants there to be this rivalry and that when we beat your team, then we're better than you. All this shtick goes, it's all understandable. It's all understandable. And all we're saying is, let's run this through the biblical filter. That our goal is to bless and be a blessing, Genesis 12. And we want to bless the opponents. We want to bless the opposing fans. We want to bless the, re the referees. We want to bless the bus driver and the people at the hotel. We we're always thinking about that. Because we want to draw them to Jesus. We want to lift the name of Jesus high with our mouth, and when appropriate. And we want to do it by our serving and our blessing and our caring and our sharing and our loving. And in particular with opposing teams, I'm going to give you two examples. I coached at a school one time, and, and we happened to be a football team. But regarding other sports, they would want to go to other sporting events, and they would want to humiliate the opponent. And they would say stuff like, but this is not football, coach. This is, it's basketball, or it's baseball, or it's soccer. So we want to taunt and embarrass them, you know, because it's fun. And that's what we see happening on TV. So they'll look at a program like Duke, which is a famous basketball program, that the fans will be right on the court and they'll be cussing at and pointing at and humiliating and, and rubbing in. And that's all part of their home game. What do you want to call it? It's their shtick. It's their home team advantage. It's this home thing. And you can do that. I don't, I don't know that Jesus, my, this is my opinion. This is the opinion of our school. I, I don't know that doing that uh, really enhances the experience for the opponent or their fans. And, uh, and you feel like, well, we need an edge. Why do you need an edge? Because you want to win, right? You want to edge to win. Well, aren't we supposed to win? Well, we're supposed to be competent, and we're supposed to play with a whole heart, a clear mind, a strong will, and great passion. But humiliating the opponent, I just, I don't, that's not going to be part of our philosophy. If you want to have a different philosophy, that's not fine. You're not going to go to hell for, because you got a different philosophy, probably. But we're talking about being a blessing, because we really are thinking about using sport to advance the kingdom and to glorify God and to bless people. And we don't see humiliating and taunting and mocking as a way that draws them to consider Jesus. Why would they consider Jesus when they treat us that way? And at some point it's hurtful, it's painful, it's grievous. And, and it doesn't have to be that way. You, 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 we have strong feelings about this, clearly, as you see. And so in this situation, what I said to our players is, listen, you're in this program and you're affiliated with this program. When one of you succeeds, it all brings blessing on everybody. One of you gets a award if one of you does a great job, but if one of you breaks the law, if one of you does something in the dorms, in season or off season, home or away, we're all in the category of this blank college football program. Right? And so our opinion is when you're in the umbrella of our program, we have a responsibility year round. That's, that's our, how we approach it, at least in the college setting. I would in high school also. I don't know that I would in youth sports because that's kind of an in and out deal. But when you're affiliated with us, you're with us. And in the season, you're considered with us. And we want you to think about others better than yourself. And in that situation, I said, no, I, I forbade it. I forbade them embarrassing the opponent. Well, they felt like that wasn't fun. Fun for you, but not fun for them. That's what you're saying. You're saying you matter more than they matter. That would be the wrong heart. But, but Duke does it or some other place. Does it. They can do what they want to do. This is our house. This is our family. This is our team. And we want to be known to be a blesser. We, we play hard. We play fair. We play smart. We play with a clear mind, a strong will, great heart, a whole heart, and great passion. We respect the game. We honor the officials. We honor the opponent. We give everything we have. We play like our hair's on fire. We want to draw people to Jesus by our testimony. We want them to consider him, and we want them to know that we consider you more important than we. That's what we want to be about. And in the sport contest, that impacts how you spectate a game. Do you jaw with the officials? We would consider that unacceptable. Now, I'm not responsible for the spectators, but I can educate my community, and I can talk to a parent about it, or fans as appropriate, and they may or may not disagree. I don't have control over that. But I promise you that our brand is going to be verbalized to the players and in the post-game locker room that we invite the family and friends to, and I'll make sure to make an educational point publicly and in the press and in every way, so people realize this is how we do business. And you'll stick out like a sore thumb if you don't. And when parents and, and the outer circle buys into the philosophy, somebody who doesn't buy in that's part of your circle probably feels some conviction. 
And the other people that see what your brand looks like realize that you're different. And God willing, some of those will say, why do you do that? What's your reason? What's your goal? And it gives you a chance to testify about the philosophy or Jesus, depending if the person is a Jesus person or if he's not. He would say, this is how we play. This is how we coach. Here's how we live, et cetera, et cetera. Give him a holistic approach to score, to sport. Think about opposing fans. I'll tell you an example. In our world right now, soccer in the Premier League in, Eng Premier League in England, it's where they have to have police escorts for the fans to come in. And they have fights, they have brawls, they have things outside the stadium against the opposing fans. That inside the stadium, they have to have police guards and usher them to sections with police there during the whole game as they uh, uh, approach each other with hatred and vehemence. It's not, it's not even like fun sports stuff. It's like a cuss and injure, and for those in the extreme, <clears throat> to, to physically maim and hurt. This is part of the culture there. And some people think that's cool. I don't think it's cool because if my daughter or my boy gets hurt or maimed or killed because they went to a sporting event <clears throat> where this was the culture, I don't think that's going to be funny. I don't think that's funny at all. In fact, I don't even think it's funny for somebody else's kid or child or adult to go to a sporting event and have that be an outcome as a result of inflamed, uncontrolled emotions. And you could say all you want, that's the culture of that thing. I'd say, well, that's not our culture. That's not what we're about. That's not what we're going to be about. That's not what we're going to promote, profess, do, endorse, etc. You do what you got to do, but in our family, in our house, this is how we do business. Because we're thinking about the king and the kingdom advancing it and his glory. And it doesn't glorify God, dishonor, disrespect, hurt, maim, curse, injure, shame, humiliate the opponent or his family or his friends or his spectators. We're committed to that. There's no exception. There's none. Zero. That's our position. Genesis 12. I, he blessed us to be a blessing. He didn't bless us so we're blessed. He blessed us to be a blessing. He blessed us to give it away. We're stewards that receive and immediately give it away. Our cup is filled and we empty it for the sake of the kingdom. And he fills it again and we empty it. He's a well that ever runs dry and we're a cup that keeps emptying ourselves by his power for his glory according to his word. That's how we treat it. How do we treat injuries? When an other team is injured or have a situation where somebody's down or hurt, we physically take a knee. We do honor and respect. We might have some strategy that has to happen, but we're not just acting like it's no big thing because that guy is somebody's son or daughter. And he's a human being. And he may be at little or a lot of risk. Or he may just have the wind knocked out of him. I can promise you people notice that. They notice when you're respecting that in this game contest, somebody got hurt at some level. And even in most stadiums, they know to clap when somebody gets up from an injury to walk up the field. Well, we want to take that not from just the spectator side, but from the player side, that as appropriate, we're going to honor the situation. You see, even at the, at the larger levels, even though they don't have an unbelieving philosophy, if somebody really gets hurt really bad, sometimes the opposing players will come over. It always touches people, right? If they know that player or it's a really grievous injury, people will come over and, and, and some of the players will. The leaders should, in our opinion. We want to honor and respect. They're in this contest. Sometimes in contests in sport all over the world, people get hurt. Sometimes they're grievous injuries. People die. Sometimes get maimed uh, for blocks of time. And we want to respect the fact that that's a human being who laid himself and put himself at risk. And we want to honor them in the process. And when there's an injury, we want to respond to that, respect it. If you're in a believing culture, pray about it. Don't be showy about it and draw attention to yourself. Draw attention to God. Do it on your breath. Do it privately. We have examples of that all the time. They go viral on the Internet when somebody actually shows caring and sharing for an opponent who has something happen to them that, that people are grieved about. Why can't we create a culture that that's normative, not just when it's an, when it's an extreme injury or situation? Let me final this, finish this segment with just a comment about prayer. Talked about it in the front end. I want to finish it on the back end. <clears throat> um, all these things that we've said, some of which are probably going to be offensive to your philosophy, some of you, you might like it, you might think it's foolish, you might feel it's stupid, you might feel it's going too far. I don't, I don't know where you're at. 
frankly, I care what you think, but I don't care at all. I care what you think because I want to care and consider others better than yourself. But, but it's not going to change us in living out this philosophy, even if you think it's corny or stupid. Or if, I'm not saying you're saying that, but if somebody views that and that's their opinion, we understand that. We understand that. And we all want to be uh, respectful that there's different ways to play. There's different ways to coach. There's different ways to spectate. We said from the beginning that this isn't a matter of right or wrong in most cases. It's not a matter of better or worse. It's just a matter of what your convictions are, what you believe, and how strong you believe, and how you want it to play out. And we feel strongly about this. Strong enough that we want to start a school with this philosophy being our distinctive. Our distinctive, again, not to differentiate better or worse, but to say different. We are serious about playing, coaching, spectating, according to the Word of God, by the vow of God, by the power of God, for the glory of God. And in every level, we are vetting our thinking and our processing and reviewing and evaluating. I get calls from my friends around the country. One coach, uh, uh, he scored a lot of points in the basketball lane and broke a record, and he wanted to know what I thought. Did it fit within the philosophy to beat opponent by a lot when you clearly were trying to break a record and score a lot of points? And I said, what do you think that felt like to the opponent? How did the fans feel? How did the referees feel? I know you, you, know, you wanted it for your team, but have you thought? The Bible says consider others better than yourself. That doesn't mean you do what others say or others want. It means you consider it. Consider it and make a decision about it, but make sure you're thoughtful about the decision, weighing all the factors. Because it's not about us. It's not about our team. It's about God and it's about others. And it needs to be considered. That's what the Bible says. And so we're trying to think that way. And situations happen all the time at the professional level, to the lower levels, to the youth level, where we say, what do we do in that situation? We want to have humility. We don't have it down. We're humans that are working out our salvation with fear and trembling. We're working out our philosophy with fear and trembling. We're evaluating all the time. I had a conversation this week about that situation I mentioned about running up the score and what that felt like to an opponent. In this case, it was another guy in our network who was a Jesus guy. But I'd say, it isn't that it's a Jesus. What happens if it's a guy we don't know who's not a Jesus guy? Does that make it a non-issue, or is it still an issue? We should be more concerned about how unbelievers view this than we do our friends view it, because we want to use sport to further the kingdom, to advance it and to glorify God. And if something's going to glorify God, and it causes us something that we lose, I want to glorify God. I want to glorify God in the beginning. I want to glorify God in the end. And if it means I die, literally or figuratively or reputationally, for the sake of lifting God high, drawing people to Jesus, and advancing the kingdom, I want to die. That's, that's our position. And it's an unnatural position. It's a supernatural position. It's unnatural to our flesh. It's unnatural to the culture. It's unnatural to the world. And it's deeply hated by the, by the forces of darkness. And that's why if you don't pray, the devil and his bad angels won't be bound. The culture won't be impacted. And people won't get a chance to see there's a different way to live and a different way to play. And that is our goal at the end of the day. We're evaluating always against the standard of the glory of God versus the glory of ourselves, of caring about others more than caring about ourselves. These are the things that drive us. They drive us. And we're evaluating all the time. All of our process, processes, either because of the conviction of the Word of God or the conviction of the Holy Spirit of just our conscience of right and wrong or how the press and others are responding to us and we need to consider what they're thinking and feeling. We're not here to please them. We're here to please them. But we do have a biblical responsibility to consider what they're feeling and thinking and weighing that against the Word of God and the glory of God. And we're thinking about this all the time. It's a hard way to coach. It's a hard way to live because you've got to think about things you never have to think about when all you want to do is win and when it's only about you. And in our case, it's not about winning. It's about the kingdom. It's about the glory of God. And it's about others. And in that, with those boundaries, we attempt to function the best we can by His power, for His glory, according to the Word. And prayer 
is what with the Word of God in combination, meditating upon the Word, reading the Word and praying, in combination, we give the Holy Spirit an opportunity for His will to be done and not our own.